إلهنا ما أعد لك مليك كل من ملك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now if you are performing salah in jama'a congregation then you will join your shoulders with the shoulders of the person next to you and keep your feet in a moderate and humble manner about four fingers apart facing the qibla your feet will not be touching the feet of the person next to you this ruling is taken from the following ahadith and practice of the sahaba radiyallahu anhu sayyidina abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala says that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Set the rows in order, stand shoulder to shoulder, close the gaps, be lenient in the hands of your brothers, and do not leave openings for the shaitan. If anyone joins up a row, Allah will join him up, but if anyone breaks a row, Allah will cut him off. This is recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan with authentic chains of narration. In this hadith, mention is made of closing all the gaps and joining the shoulders next hadith sayyidina barra ibn azib radiyallahu ta'ala says the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pass through the row from one side to the other he used to set out our chest and shoulders in order and say do not differ otherwise your hearts will differ and he would say allah and his angels bless those who are near the first row This is recorded by Imam Ahmad and Imam Abu Dawood with authentic chains of narration. In this hadith mention is made of setting the shoulders and chests in order to keep the line straight. Sayyidina Anas radhiyallahu ta'ala says, "At Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, stand close together in your rows, keep near to one another and keep your necks in line. For by him in whose hands my soul is i see the shaitan entering through the opening in the row like small sheep this is recorded by imam ahmad in his musnad and imam abu dawood with authentic chains of narrations in this hadith mention is made of standing close to each other and keeping the necks in line sayyidina nu'man ibn bashir radiyallahu anhu says rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would straighten our rows One day he came out and saw that a person had his chest out of the row slightly away from the people so he said either you straighten your rows or Allah will make your hearts differ in this hadith instruction is given to straighten the rows and keeping the chest in line Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi further adds after this narration and says It is narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said straightening the rows is part of the completion of salah. It is also narrated from Sayyidina Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he would appoint a person to straighten the rows and he would not say the takbir until he was informed that the rows were straightened. It is also narrated from Sayyidina Ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and Sayyidina Uthman radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that they both would be very particular about it and they would both say straighten up sayyidina ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu would even say o so and so move forward and o so and so move back it is very clear from the above narration that the instruction of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to everyone is to straighten the rows and fill in the gaps by joining the shoulders together This is the general understanding of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum from the above emphasized and strict instructions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, some of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum have mentioned the following observation from the above instruction which does not seem to be part of the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sayyidina Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned his face towards the people and said three times straighten your rows he then said by Allah you will straighten your rows or Allah will make your hearts differ Sayyidina Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu ta'ala adds I saw each person join his shoulder with the shoulder of the person next to him his knees with his knees and his ankle with his ankle 
This is also recorded by Imam Ahmad and Imam Abu Dawood with authentic chains of narration. This hadith shows the shoulders, knees and the ankles were all joined together which is in reality extremely difficult to do. Sayyidina Anas ta'ala says that the Prophet wasallam said Straighten your rows for indeed I see you from behind my back. Sayyidina Anas ta'ala further said We would join our shoulders and feet with the shoulders and feet of the person next to us. This is recorded by Imam Bukhari rahimahullah. The observation of Sayyidina Nu'man ibn Bashir and Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhumah is most definitely referring to exaggeration in straightening the rows and keeping everything in line but not literally touching because it will be quite impossible to keep the necks in line and join the knees, ankles and the feet together and fill the gaps. If the feet are touching, there would be a huge gap between the feet and the shoulders will not be touching which doesn't fulfill the instruction of closing the gaps. Therefore, the actual sunnah is what Nabi sallallahu instructed and not the apparent meaning of joining the body parts. The reason for this is because of what the muhaddithin such as Hafiz ibn Hajar, Asqalani rahimahullah and Allama Shawkani rahimahullah have written under the commentary of the above hadith of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala. Hafiz ibn Hajar rahmatullah writes, the intention, i.e. of Imam Bukhari in this chapter, is to emphasize the straightening of the rows and filling the gaps in between. Imam Shawkani rahmatullah writes, The statement in the above hadith means place the parts of the body, i.e. shoulders, feet, etc. in line with each other, so that the shoulders of each person performing prayer is level with the shoulders of the next person. This way, everyone's shoulders, knees and feet will be in a single straight line. This clearly shows that the actual reason for joining the body parts was to straighten the rows and not physically joining, the, joining them together. Hafiz ibn Hajar writes, The above mentioned practice was done at the time of the Prophet However, because this practice of joining the feet with other people was not the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, and hence not Sunnah, therefore it was discontinued by the Sahaba anhum themselves. It is narrated from the narration of Imam, Imam Ma'mar rahimahullah, that Sayyidina Anas anhu, who is the narrator of this hadith said later in his life, if I was to attempt this, meaning joining the shoulders and feet together with anybody today, they would run away like wild mules. This is recorded by Hafiz ibn Hajar in Fathul Bari, Imam ibn Abi Shayba and others with chains declared authentic by Imam Zahabi, Hafiz ibn Hajar and Shaykh Albani rahimahumullah. The above authentic narration draws our attention to an interesting question. If the above practice was a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the practice of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, then why would the Sahaba abandon it after him? And why would the Sahaba and their followers dislike it so much that they would run away like wild mules from the sunnah? If the above conclusions are not drawn, then a person has to assume that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum had no regard for the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, which is why they abandoned this after his life al billah such conclusion can never be drawn about the sahaba ta'ala, who were such lovers of the sunnah that they would sacrifice their lives in order to follow every sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, let alone abandon it Imam Malik ibn Abi Amir al-Ansari rahimahullah said Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu would say in his khutbah when the salah would start he would say straighten your rows and join your shoulders because straightening the rows is part of the completion of salah and he would not say the takbir until the men whom he had appointed for straightening the rows would not inform him of the rows being straightened and then he would say the takbir this is recorded by Imam Muhammad in his Muatta. 
note very clearly that Sayyidina Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu ta'ala have not instructed anyone to join their feet together. Let us see how other Sahaba radiallahu anhum kept their feet in Salah when they would pray alone. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala saw a person praying with his feet joined together. So he said, he has gone against the Sunnah and in a different narration he said, he has made a mistake in the Sunnah. Had he done Murawaha, it would have been better and pleasing to me. Murawaha is to lean on one side at one time and the other side at another time due to lengthy standing. It is reported about Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala, that when he would pray, he would not separate his feet too much nor join them together, but he would keep a moderate space between them. Conclusion We have seen in the first four ahadith the instruction of the Prophet وسلم, to straighten the rows and not leave any gaps in between. We have also seen that Sayyidina Umar Uthman Ali ta'ala, would instruct and appoint people to straighten the rows and even tell them to move forward and back, but there is no mention of their instruction to join the feet. We have seen the explanation from the Muhaddithin of the hadith that the observation of joining the feet was just an expression of exaggeration and not the literal meaning because it's extremely difficult if not impossible to join the necks, knees, ankles and feet together. Hypothetically speaking, even though it's impossible, if this was to be done in the standing position, then is it still to be done during sajda and sitting position? How would it be done? done during ruku, sitting and sajda position. There is no evidence to suggest that it should be done only in the standing position. We have seen that this practice of joining the feet was not a sunnah and that it was abandoned by the Sahaba ta'ala and the Tabi'een straight after the Prophet We have also seen the practice of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar in hadith number 10 and the instruction of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud of murawaha of keeping a small gap between the feet in salah. It is possibly because of the practice of the above sahaba our fuqaha عنهم, have mentioned the following method of standing in salah. They have written preferably the distance of a person's feet should be about four fingers of the hand and that is closest to devotion and this is the practice narrated of Imam Abu Nasr al-Dabusi It is precisely this very reason that the mujtahideen and fuqaha of the followed four madhahib have not issued fatawa of joining the feet in the congregation but instructed that a person stands in a natural and humble manner in front of Allah in salah. These are the reasons our fuqaha have mentioned and this is the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad rahimahumullah and the general fatawa of the ulama. Wallahu a'lamu bis sawab wa ilmuhu atammu ahkam. Allah knows best. Ilahana <laughs> maliku